Hello you wonderful people and welcome back to the Crested Gaming Lounge. In today's video we're gonna talk, we're gonna get a closer look at a game that has had a fair bit of controversy since its release. I am of course talking about Fallout 76. From my understanding and if memory serves me right, most people's biggest complaints were that the game was nothing what they expected. I believe that people looked forward to like a Fallout 5 situation or basically like a Fallout 4 online. Uh, this on top of the game being very buggy and broken on launch made its release a big failure in every sense of the word. Uh, since then, however, Bethesda has done multiple updates to the game to fix the game's very rocky start. Uh, the biggest update, uh, I will say, that gave the game new life uh, and, in, and obviously an increase in players was the Wastelanders update that saw the addition of fully voiced human NPCs, something that people really missed from the other games. Uh, this included quest chains with human NPCs uh, and not just the typical robot or holotaped based quest that was the standard before this update. So just to give like a short, like the short and sweet of it from the premise of the game, uh, it is very much still your typical Fallout game. You are a Vault Dweller, uh, as they are called, and you wake up in uh, Vault 76 uh, as the last remaining Vault Dweller in there. Uh, you seem to have overslept by quite a lot since you seem, it seems like everyone else has left like quite some time ago if you go what like... Uh, if you go by what the robots tell you, it seems like they've left by, I don't know, probably months, maybe years. So I don't know what happened to you, because you don't seem to, you're not in any stasis, you just wake up in your bed. That's it. You get some instructions and a mobile camp unit to prepare you for the life in Appalachia after the war. Uh, the talent system is a bit different from the previous game, Fallout 4. Uh, as you work on more like a card-based loadout type system. Your first task since the new update is to visit the settlement known as the Wayward, uh, where you get to talk to a woman who is obviously in charge, called Duchess. After witnessing a random bandit get his head blown away by a ghoul named Mort, that apparently has a very strong allergy to strawberries, as the clip will show. Now what can I do for you? After this all goes down, you talk to Duchess about helping her out to get rid of these bandits for good, as they seem to think the wayward is the location, or at least a clue, to the treasure troll from one man called Crane. I highly recommend going through this storyline, as it is a very good one, uh, you will at the same time get instructions from your overseer in form of holotapes. This quest series is the former start quest series, but I do recommend you still follow this alongside the Duchess one, as they now sort of intertwine. Uh, what I mean with this is that you will ask Duchess about the overseer and she will help you in your search. Character creation. So the character creation in Fallout 76 is basically the same as in Fallout 4. Nothing too spectacular in my opinion. On PC it is actually a bit wonky and the controls is a bit off in my opinion. It doesn't make much sense. With the controller it probably ma makes a whole lot more sense. Classes and roles. I will not be talking too much about classes in this review as the game does not have any set specific classes in that sense. Uh, you have sort of traits, like core traits, uh, in the form of perks. These are uh, th these are your typical RPG perks. It's like strength, perception, endurance, uh, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. So it's like your typical your typical setup for any kind of RPG, really. As you level up, you will unlock perk cards that are classified in any of the different perks mentioned above. Uh, these cards give you 
abilities such as being able to carry more stuff which falls in the strength perk for example uh, but also more combat oriented abilities such as being better at using certain weapon types or sneak more efficiently you know your typical you know the typical customization for your more open rpgs start leveling areas uh, we can't really talk about any kind of specific start leveling area since this game is very much open world and you start smack into it there's no baby area nothing like you learn all the you know basics you get all that the, the, the only type of start leveling area we can see is the wayward where you help out duchess but after that you're free to roam as you wish i do recommend doing these quests uh that count as the main story though like do focus on the main story otherwise you will get sidetracked very easily quests the quest in Fallout 76 is very straightforward in my opinion. Uh, you talk to a person to pick a quest or you simply walk into an area with a radio signal and tune in to the right frequency and you get a quest that way. Uh, there are many different ways of getting quests in the game. There's also daily events to keep you busy for a significant time, even at max level. Most of the quests given to you go on in multiple steps. Uh, and some of them do not even have to be returned, but simply complete after you've finished all of the objectives the quest give you. I will be talking about leveling here too a little bit. Uh, the leveling system is a bit different in this game, as max level, with an air quote, uh, is not exact. What I mean with this is the official, the, the official, official max level, English number one. It's level 50, but you still keep on getting levels after that. Uh, however, after level 50, you won't necessarily get any stronger, per se. You can move your perk cards around, however, if you feel you want to, uh, like, respect in a way. Gameplay and combat. Uh, the combat in Fallout 76 is very similar to any of the other Fallout games, or any other FPS game for that matter. Uh, of course, the perk cards you get is going to greatly improve some weapon types, such as uh, the use of rifles, or pistols, or perhaps even melee weapons. I will say the combat is very appealing to me, uh, as it's not your typical FPS combat. It's, it's not like you jump into like CSGO or Call of Duty or any one of those, right? Uh, as you can greatly alter it with melee damage, grenades, or even nukes. But in conclusion, you are very free to make up your own playstyle in this game, and you can change it as you go. I recommend if you are a new player and haven't tried out any of the Fallout games, uh, something with loads of health, such as like a heavy melee build, with perhaps some kind of mid-ranged firearm, so you cover a wide variety of weapon types. Graphics. The graphics in-game is pretty decent in my opinion. Sure, it's not like a super high def with like ray tracing and all that like the new AAA titles have, but to me all that is not really necessary, unless your goal with the game is to be as graphically stunning as possible. And most games that are FPS based or any other such fast paced gameplay, it's not really needed because you're not going to have the time to look around at your surroundings too much. The game is very pretty with many stunning places though to discover uh, in your journey through Appalachia. Uh, something that is always interested me in the Fallout games because uh, they're always modeled uh, on a actual place. Uh, in the US mostly. Uh, this is this is not a uh, this is no different though, uh, as Appalachia is an actual location in the eastern US. I think it's some kind of nature location. Like it, it's not like a nature reserve, but it's something along those lines. It's stretched from like New York State to somewhere else. I don't know exactly where, but bugs and glitches. Now, we come to one of the more unfortunate categories when we are talking about 76, 
and that is bugs and glitches. The game has its fair share of those, and at times that can be pretty annoying. Uh, however, the gameplay and experience greatly outweigh the bugs, however. Uh, Bethesda do work on fixing these, but in a very slow pace, I might add. Audio. We're going to talk about audio as well. Uh, the audio in the game is... It's a big part of it, I will say. There is, like, ghouls, which is basically zombies. Uh, and they are... Sometimes they make noise, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they react to sound, similar to other zombie games. And the music in general in the Fallout games are great. It's, it's like a variety of, like, 20s to 50s-ish music. It's great. It's really, really nice. Difficulty and pace of leveling. Okay, difficulty and pace of leveling. I will say before uh, one of the more recent patches, the difficulty would be pretty hard. Uh, not due to the game, uh, like that. Uh, not due to the game being difficult in itself, but due to a very unfortunate mechanic that seems to have been fixed now though. Uh, what I mean with this is that before areas did not really scale in a proper way. Okay, so let's take an example. I have a quest and I'm level like let's say 15. Uh, in an, I have a quest in an area, I have to go over there and there's also a level 72 player over there. Since they were there first, all of the enemies in the area will be level 50 or above. Uh, this made it very hard for new players to progress uh, like I said, they have fixed this now, and the areas and enemies seem to now be appropriately like, leveled for any player in the area. It took way too long for them to fix, in my opinion, such a simple problem that should not have been an issue to begin with. The pace of leveling is very depending on what you like to do. If you strictly follow the main missions with an occasional side mission, uh, you can level pretty fast. Uh, if you instead like to explore and take your time, it takes a bit longer, of course. I do really prefer a combo of the both, as I do really like exploring the worlds of Fallout in general. Overall opinion! Right, we're gonna talk about my opinion of this game. Uh, I'm not saying that Bethesda was treated poorly with the early drama surrounding the game. Uh, however, that being said, I do think most people had a vision of what the game was that was completely different from what it actually was and was, you know, planned to be. Uh, that being that pro most people probably expected a Fallout 5 or an online version of Fallout 4. Uh, if you went into the game with the expectation to play an online survival game in a Fallout-styled world, it was a very nice experience. Of course, the game was riddled with bugs early on. Uh, these have been fixed for the most part, and Bethesda did hear people's pleas, or complaints rather, and did implement the NPC update, uh, and the game got a new breath of life. So in conclusion, I do say, if you want a great Fallout experience, and you like playing with your friends online, this is a great game to try out. Uh, the latest updates seem very promising for new players, as well as veterans, so now is a perfect opportunity to join in. So, you wonderful people, that was it for this week's video. Don't forget to boop that like button if you enjoyed the video, and if you like me, consider headbutting the crap out of that sub button and become a part of the Crested Gaming Lounge. If you can't wait until next week's video, I do stream over at Twitch TV every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 9pm GMT plus 1. Link is in the description. Until we meet again, I hope you have a great morning, day, or night, wherever you might be. See you around, people. Bye-bye.